In this video tutorial, I will be explaining to you bubble sort, one of the most basic sorting algorithms. I will be explaining you bubble sort by taking an example and the aim would be that once you watch this video, the whiteboard animation video, you should be clear in your mind what bubble sort does. And if I am able to give that picture to you, I think my aim will be fulfilled. So let's start with our bubble sort example. So here is the input list of numbers. So we have 1000, 1, 100, 101, 15. Now before we start with actual sorting of the elements, let me tell you in brief what bubble sort does. So bubble sort actually bubbles up the largest number to the top or in our case to the bottom because we are going to sort in ascending order. So the largest number keeps bubbling down to the right side of the list or the bottom of the list and with each iteration once it gets completed progressively your list keeps getting sorted with the largest element moving towards the right with every iteration. So to make it more clear, let me show you an example so that you will understand. So we start with iteration 1. So we start off with a clean slate, the same numbers which we have to sort. Then we compare the first element 1000 with 1. And as 1000 is greater than 1, we move 1000 down. Then we compare 1000 to the next number which is 100. So 1000 is again greater than 100. So 1000 moves down and 100 moves up. Next we compare 1000 with 101. And again 1000 is greater than 101. So again 1000 moves down and 101 moves up. And now 1000 is compared with 15. So now 1000 occupies the last position. Now this is important to note that 1000 has now found its final position. So this is a part of now a sorted sublist. 1000 is now sorted. It's in correct place. It is the largest element. So it has reached the end. Next we start with iteration 2. So we'll whatever element the state we had we will put it here at the starting. Okay. And next we start with. So 1000 was started. Next we start with by comparing 1 with 100. So 1 is smaller than 100. So it doesn't change its place. Next we compare 100 to 101. Again 100 is smaller than 101. It doesn't change its place. Next we compare 101 with 15. Now in this case 101 is bigger than 15. So it goes down and 15 comes up. So now if you closely observe our last two elements are sorted. So let's understand what happened and by this you will you should get a clear picture of how bubble sort works. So in the first iteration 1000 moves to the last position which is its correct position. In the second iteration, we progressively keep comparing elements as we move our comparison pointer downwards. So 1 to 100, then 100 to 101, then 101 to 15. And finally, we stop at 15 because 1000 was sorted. So we stop till we have the unsorted element. Since 1000 is sorted, we, the comparison stop in second iteration at 15. So 15 and 101 are replaced. 15 moves up and 101 moves down. Now at the end of second iteration, that is or more generally at the end of nth iteration, the last n numbers are sorted. So if this is the end of the second iteration. So last two numbers are in the correct position. So as you can guess, in the next iteration number 3, the last three elements at the end of the iteration 3 will be 
sorted. So we'll start with the list as it was at the end of iteration two. Now we compare 1 to 100, 1 is smaller than 100, 1 remains at its place. Next we compare 100 to 15 and we find that 100 is greater than 15, so 15 moves up, 100 moves down and as you know 101 and 1000 are already sorted, so our comparison stop at 15 and this time since it's iteration number 3 we get three numbers in the correct sorted position at the end. So our sorted sublist now consists of three numbers at the end of iteration 3. 100, 101 and 1000 are now in their correct position. Next is iteration 4. In our five member or five number input list, this is our fourth iteration and at the end of which four numbers should be at their correct position. Currently three are at the correct position. So in this we compare 1 to 15 and 1 as we know is smaller than 15. So 1 remains there, 15 remains here and the last three elements are sorted. So no more comparisons. So now four elements are in the correct position and the only remaining element has to be in its correct position. This implies that we have the final sorted list with us. It is important to understand here that for n numbers, it takes n minus 1 iterations to get n minus 1 numbers in the correct sorted position and the last number will obviously be in the sorted position. So this is a 5 number list and so it took us 4 iterations to arrive at the correct sorted list. So I'm just writing down the final sorted list. So this is how bubble sort works. So just to quickly recap, at the end of iteration 1000 bubble to its correct position. At the end of the second iteration, 101 bubble to its correct position, which is the second last position. At the end of the third iteration, Three numbers acquired their correct position and at the end of the fourth and last iteration four numbers got their correct position and the fifth number as I said out of n numbers n, n minus 1 numbers are sorted and the nth number in case 1 is correctly sorted. So we have the final list. Next let us look at the Java code quickly and understand how we can implement the bubble sort algorithm in Java. This is the Java code for implementing bubble sort algorithm. So let's see, I have taken the same input list 1000, 100, 101, and 15. And next, I go to the main method. So here I print the numbers before sorting them and then I have used this print array method for printing the numbers. Okay, till here it's straightforward. Now this is the actual sorting logic. So you have two uh, loops here. One loop with the counter outer and another with the counter inner. So the outer loop is for iterations. So let me go back to that snapshot. So as you see here, this is iteration 1 and the outer loop is for this whole iteration. So as you can see in iteration 1, we do comparison 4 times, right? 1000 to 1, 1000 to 100, 1000 to 101 and 1000 to 15. As we progressively keep pushing or bubbling the th number 1000 towards the right, we do four comparisons. So let's see in the Java code how this is done. 
so as i explained for n numbers there will be n minus 1 iterations so we, that is why we have outer is less than the length so outer will iterate for num for numbers less than 10 so outer will iterate as many times as the length of the number array so outer will iterate till it reaches just the number before the array length now inner has to do two things inner has to compare we use inner to compare and at the same time we want inner to stop at the second last number or the last number or the third last number depending on our iteration we are in so as we saw in the first iteration we went on till the end right we didn't stop so you see here the comparison went on till 15 and at the end we got 1000 now in the second iteration we stop at the second last number so if in this case you see we compare 1 to 100 100 to 101 101 to 15 and then we stop because 1000 is already sorted so as the iteration number increases the number of comparisons decrease because the number of sorted sublist increases so, so from below you get the second number in sorted position but that means that you assume or you know that the last number is already sorted so this actually refers to the logic that your inner iteration that is one is outer and this one is inner so here you have three inner comparisons and the inner comparison stop at a position which is one minus the outer positions number so this implies the logic that your inner iterations are going to have so many comparisons as in n the total number minus the number of sorted elements which is nothing but the outer number so so it will be length minus outer and since so it will be length minus outer and since we are starting from zero because that's what we normally do in java we do another minus one because we don't want to do one extra time so with every outer being kept constant that is for first iteration i start from the zeroth position of inner that is the topmost one i compare 0 to 0 plus 1 so we compare element at zeroth position that is 1 with 0 plus 1 position that is 100 then we compare 100 to 101 so this is the inner loop the arrows which you see moving down this is the inner loop moving forward and the outer loop is the iteration so this is how our inner loops number of comparisons keep reducing because the inner loop only works till total length say, say it's 5 here and outer is currently 3 then 5 minus 3 minus 1 because of the 0 so 5 minus 4 so 1 so it will do only so as the number of outer keeps increasing that is the more we move further into the algorithm the more number of positions are in the correct order and the more is the number of outer so we get a reducing number of inner comparisons while the outer comparisons go ahead so as the iterations that is the outer count increases the inner comparison decrease because so many numbers are already sorted and this is simple so if the number is greater as we saw we, we were replacing it the top one with the bottom one so we kept on moving elements downward so this is how we move elements downward we just keep swapping them and then i print the array after sorting and this is the sorted array so this is how bubble sort works and you can jump to and fro between the whiteboard video and the java code i've shown here and i'm also going to put a annotation in the, at the end of the video giving a link to the java source code so
so that you can go and just copy it and you can relate the two the java code and the whiteboard by looking at them together thank you if you like the way i explained the bubble sort algorithm please do like and subscribe my channel java brahman where i have more videos and i am coming up with more videos as well on algorithms data structures and other areas in java and j2e as well as design so please do like and subscribe thank you